wanted to do something a little different today. I wrestled with this uh, for a few days because sometimes God kind of leads me to do things and I kind of say, God, you think that you really think that's a good idea? Um, and uh, God, you know, uh, is there any way you can come up with something else? Because this is, this is a terrible idea. And so I had this conversation, maybe you just take everything God says to you and you run with it. Help the rest of us who don't always do that. And so I began to feel the Lord leading me to do this. And my first initial reaction was a little bit like, okay, God, that, that's silly. That's goofy. You know, I need something a little more. I mean, you know, give me one of those words that just make the, sh the earth shake. So I didn't get one. Uh, however, uh, I'm still waiting. No, I'm just joking. So uh, the Lord led me to do this again today. And obviously I have some tools I'm going to use with me today to help teach uh, some things. And um, uh, I wrestle with this because what I am going to do today is this last week uh, with the combination of Digging Deeper and some of the things that Brother Trombley shared with us on Digging Deeper, some powerful, powerful word studies and some insights of scripture, Com combine that with Tuesday talks. Uh, I want to kind of bring both of those together if I can. And so if you've watched both of those, you're going to hear a lot of the familiarity from both the Digging Deeper and Tuesday Talks from this last week. But what my desire is through the power of the Holy Ghost is to kind of bring both of those in a combination and so that you can bring and see both of those at work together. And I believe it's not only going to be revelatory, but I believe it's going to be highly, highly applicable in your life, no matter what stage you are in. And ultimately, I got to be frank with you, that's sort of one of the issues I have uh, with current Christianity is current Christianity has a lot of theoretics. It has a lot of God is good. You're going to make it. You're awesome. Uh, there was one particular fellow that I came across the other day. Uh, he has got a huge church. Uh, I won't say his name. He just blinks a lot. Sounds like a sounds. He smiles and blinks a lot. So if you know who I'm talking about, uh, you'll know. He talks very slow and very much like that. But anyways, if you know who I'm talking about, I won't call his name. But I listened to about 10 minutes. I don't even know. I think I don't even know where I came across it. But I came across about 10 minutes of something he was talking about. And I'm not, I, I'm not exaggerating. In 10 minutes, everything he said was a, was a, was a, was a cliche. You're awesome. You're going to make it. This is your time. You're not, this is, I mean, it was all wonderful from the standpoint. It was encouraging to a degree, but it wasn't really applicable. You're telling me something great. How, how can I get from point A to point B? God loves me. I believe God loves me. But let's get out of theoretics today. We're going to get right down where you're living in your life and be challenged today to take a step further in uh, the work of God and in God's light, in God's God's uh, working in your life, and so uh, today, lo and behold, I'm going old school. Uh, I'm going to use an actual Bible. Can you believe this? These things are still out there. In case you uh, don't know what one of these is, kids, this is an actual Bible. Yes, the Bible was not originally written for your iPad or your phone. Uh, I want to pull a scripture out. Uh, we used it on Tuesday talks. But I'm, I mean, uh, on uh, digging deeper, but I want to use it today as an opening. And it's a very familiar, super familiar scripture to us. All of you could probably quote it to a degree. If you couldn't quote it exactly, you could probably get most of it right. Psalms 23, right? The famous psalm written by David. It's been sung. It's been, you know, memorialized. It's been quoted. It is used. I mean, even, even non-Christians, it seems like, are familiar with the words of Psalms 23 to a degree. But we know what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. Now, verse number three is what I want you to focus on for just a mo moment. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So we read that and it sounds, again, Psalms 23 is so beautifully written, 
so poetic. Uh, you've read it. It's, it looks great on your wall and your home. Um, it has been talked about, preached about, um, spoken about, sung about. It's just a phenomenal uh, passage of scripture for so many reasons. But this verse number three uh, has such a huge concept. We talked about this on Digging Deeper, lesson number three, Brother Trombley introduced. And I've got this here uh, today, not so we can be, a, a, I'm not trying to take you back to school. For some of you are panicking because you didn't like school and you're like, oh my goodness, we're going back to school. I got this because I want to show you some things visually today, a little bit like what we did on Tuesday Talks, but I want you to be able to see some things because as we go through them, I want you to be able to kind of connect in your mind some of these things uh, as we're going. This word, we talked about it, Brother Trombley introduced us to it. It is a Hebrew word. It's spelled S-H-U-W-B. It's shub, to shub. And it literally, this word is the word used here, restore, and it simply means really, and it's simplicity, and I hope you can see these today. It means to return. So we have this word there, and if you have a if you have a Bible uh, app that has it, I, there's several of them out there. One is called Touch Bible. It's uh, you just hit the word Restoreth, and you'll see this word uh, pop up. And um, it's used. This word is used uh, somewhere about 1,100 times in Scripture, and it, it, it's at its basic foundation. It is the word. It is used to return. And what we proposed on Digging Deeper, and really what I want to challenge you today as we kind of put these together, is this. Return to what? That's the question, right? I get we need to return, but the idea of is to return to what? He restoreth my soul. He's bringing my soul to return and part of that, which is such a beautiful thing, not what I want to talk about today, but Psalms 23 is so beautiful because Psalms 23, restoreth my soul, is God is bringing our soul back to its original condition that sin calls decay. We understand man was, was, was made in the image of God. We see this in the book of Genesis in the garden, and then man uh, was introduced to sin through uh, disobedience to God's word. And next thing you know, we find the effects of sin in our life. And God says, I want to restore, return your soul back to its original condition. But this idea to return is a beautiful concept and one that when we look at some things, we're going to piece it together here in a minute, is going to show you it's not just simply to return, but to return to what? Brother Trombley gave us this beautiful uh, illustration here and kind of basic uh, understanding of this word from a um, concept is if you have uh, a cliff here, if this is a cliff and you're walking this way, the idea is not simply to just turn and go another direction because you may have another cliff here. So the idea is, we say, well, it means to, we, we need to turn. We need to turn, turn from our ways. You are correct, but turn to what? Because if I simply turn and I'm not turning to something correct, I'm going to leave one cliff for another cliff. And this is why I talked about a little bit on Digging Deeper. This is what I like to call habitual sinning. And we get in this cycle. And we just go around. And so our life literally is this cycle where we're literally going from cliff to cliff, avoiding cliffs in our life. So we heard for this cliff, oh, that's bad. God, I need to, I need to return. I need to repent, return. I turn and I, what I do? I head towards another cliff and I find myself in this sort of cycle just trying to avoid destruction in my life. I know that's bad. I know this is bad. And so what am I doing? I'm kind of living this roaming life of trying to avoid the catastrophic thing in my life. Bad sin. Sin is bad. Sin, bad. Got to get away from sin. So what do I do? I just 
I spend my entire life avoiding sin. Well, I got to be frank with you. I've lived that way. I live that way, and that's a miserable way to live. Avoiding sin is a horrible way to live for Jesus Christ. Because the Bible talks about living for Jesus. There's joy, there's peace, there's righteousness. I mean, it, it makes it sound like it's exciting, but then when you get into people's lives and you get to talk to them, they're not really all that excited. No wonder we don't share the gospel with people or share Christ with others around us because we're not really all that excited about it anyways. I mean, to be frank with you, half of our attitude is, look, it's too late for me. Save yourselves. Run. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's kind of the way we are, right? Like, you know what? I, it's too late for me. I got baptized and I got filled with the Holy Ghost and now I'm a part of the church. And I, can't, I, I can't do anything about it because I leave now. I'm going straight to hell, apparently. But it's not too late for you. Run. Run. Because honestly, this type of life, there's no joy in that. There's no, uh, there's no, when I woke up this morning, my mind was stayed on Jesus. In that song, we hadn't sung in a while, but you know the song, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Whoa, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It keeps going. The devil don't like it when my mind is stayed on Jesus. Oh, the devil don't like it with my mind. That's a great song, right? But this is how we sing it. I woke up this morning with my mind that I can't sin today. I woke up this morning with my mind. Can't have bad thoughts today. There's no joy in that because all I'm doing is trading one cliff for another. And so we talk about, let's talk about the excitement, the joy of the Holy Ghost, the joy of life in Christ, the transformational change of what it's like. And you're like, I don't have any of that. I got stress. Check. I got pressure. Check. Check. Because this is my life. Because we really don't understand truly what it's like to live a life with Christ and walk with Christ and understand the power that is available to us if we apply it correctly. Do you know every battery has a, I don't know why I'm using this. I like I'm, I'm, my inner teacher's coming out in me. So I told God this was a goofy idea. Apparently, uh, he wanted me to unleash the power of the blackboard today. Every battery has a positive and a negative to it, right? And we've all done that. We've all put batteries into your remote or into something else, and it doesn't work. And you're like, "What's wrong with the battery? The battery's the battery's dead." Then you open the battery and realize, oh, wait a minute, I got it wrong. It's in the right, wrong direction. You flip it, you put the right end, the positive, the positive, negative, and negative. Next thing you know, voila, the battery works. I think this is really indicative of some of us right now. We have the right tools, we have the right power but we're not connecting it in the right way. And so therefore, we're clicking buttons, but nothing in our life is changing. We're not, we can't change the channel. Even though we got the remote, we're clicking, but the channel's not changing. Why? Because we got the battery backwards. So hopefully in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost today, through the revelation of his word, we're going to be able to reconnect some things in your mind so that there can be power the Bible says that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's available to every believer who's received the Spirit of God. As promised to us in Acts chapter 1, we will receive power. But a lot of us don't live with that power because we have 
connections that are wrong. So let's get back to this word, right? We're going back to our word uh, in Psalms 23, the, our, our Hebrew word. That means to return. And so you see this, he restores my soul. He returns my soul. And Brother Trombley does a phenomenal job, and I'm not going to go into it today because I don't have time. Brother Trombley does a phenomenal job going through this word, tracing it through uh, a lot of different scriptures. And I would encourage you, go back to look at Lesson 3 of Digging Deeper and uh, listen to Brother Trombley as he kind of digs through these things. Um, but as we look at this, the second part of that verse, and i got to be honest with you, we got a lot of we we get a lot of half verse theology. We get a lot of half verse theology that happens that we quote half a verse and we make a make an assumption about half a verse. We don't finish the verse which gives us the completion. I'll give you a good example of that for a moment if you'd bear with me and that comes from um uh Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is a great example of a half-verse theology. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you know it, but I'll read it again. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Boom, I love God. Well, therefore, if I love God, then everything's going to work out good. And so we create this half-verse theology, if I'll call it that, based off the fact that it's in the Bible and it says it, all things work together for good to them that love God. I love God, therefore, psh, all things are going to work together. But we don't finish it. All things work together to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So one word, forgive me, going back to my little board here, one word unlocks the entire power of the first part of that verse without the second part the first part does not apply with any power in your life so you can quote it you can put it on a bumper sticker you can tattoo it on your arm you can speak it into existence and it will have zero effect in your life all things work together for good great see the bible says that but you need the power of his to unlock the power of the first part of that verse. You need both aspects of that verse working together in order for it to come to fruition and fruit in your life. So let's go back to this if I can today. And hopefully I haven't completely lost you with the use of my whiteboard. But apparently I'm having a lot more fun than I thought I would using my little whiteboard here. I might have to bring this thing back as the Lord leads. So we're going to go to the second part of Psalms 23. Psalms 23, verse 3, we said, He restoreth my soul. Then the second part of that verse gives us the answer. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So now we understand here, we've got this cliff, the cliff of sin, right? We'll just call it the cliff of sin. And we are heading towards the cliff of sin in our life. And there we go. We're heading towards the cliff of sin. And there's sin. we got a cliff. And we know, oh, oh God, this is wrong. We're convicted or, the, or somehow this cliff is pointed out to us and say, hey, you're about to fall. So what do we do? We shoot. We turn our ways. We turn but more importantly, to turn, we return. We return to what? We return back to his path, or let's call it for a lack of a better term today, let's call it his way. So now if you see this visually, you see there's a difference between living a life of a cycle versus living a life of true returning to what? Restores my soul. How does he restore my soul? He restores my soul by leading me back to the path or the ways of righteousness. That's why I can actually see true tangible change in my life. How many of you today are watching me this morning and you have things in your life that you just seemingly can't get past? I've been there before. I've battled with addictions. 
I battle with habitual sin. I battle with things that literally I, I was just so angry at myself. Why can't you, why can't, why can't you change? Why, why do you keep doing this? And, and I tell myself a thousand times, no, never, never going to do this. And what do you find? You find yourself doing it again. And then it gets to the point in time where you do this so much, you almost give up and go, well, I don't know what they're allowed to do. But honestly, I found after a while and many, 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 many times of failing that the problem I was having was is that I was just simply turning away from, but I was not returning to. You know the scripture Jesus talks about that the that you bind the straw man and you kick him out of the house and he leaves and what does he do? He comes back to the house, finds it empty, swept, and garnished. And then what happens? He goes and finds seven of his buddies and they come back and they inhabit the house. So not only you kicked out one problem and you get seven more in return. So then what do we do? We know that's the case. So we stop kicking things out of our life because we don't want to kick things out and have to deal with seven something seven times greater. So we just let things in our life because it's easier to deal with what we do know than deal with what we don't know. So we deal with it. But the issue is, it's not kicking it out is the problem we're having. We need to kick this stuff out. Kick it out of your life. Kick it out. We need to get it. We need to throw it. We need to get some things out of our life. The problem is, if we're just trying to get rid of sin, sin is an amazing thing. It's like a weed. No matter how much you pull it out of your flower bed, if you come back in a couple weeks, there are going to be more weeds. Sin just seems to be able to grow anywhere. You ever seen a, 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 a weed or something that has found its way through rock, through asphalt, through concrete? My driveway is concrete. One little crack in my driveway and a weed works its way up. Sin is like that. Sin is going to find every little single crack in your life. It's going to work its way through. If you've got a crack, sin's going to find its way in. Now, I don't say that from the standpoint of that means you've got to live this perfect life. You've got to be always, you know, sort of uh, walking around in sort of your holy stance. Um, I don't have any cracks. Um, I don't have any cracks. That's why we have the grace of God. That's why we need the grace of God. That's why we have his mercy. That's why we have his blood. Because his blood fills in the cracks. Ooh. Mm, I wish I could get somebody that's watching to give an amen. His blood fills in the cracks. That's why we need his blood every day in our life. That's why we need to apply his blood. Lord, I receive your grace today. I speak your blood over my life today. Why well, I'm filling in the cracks because I know I got cracks. I got cracks. I got more cracks than a desert. I got cracks everywhere. But his grace and his blood flow and cover my cracks. Why? Because I don't want sin wiggling its way in. And when I don't cover it, guess what? Sin finds, it don't even take, it don't even have to take a day. Give it an hour. Come on, you all been there. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you that have been around for a while, you know what I'm talking about. One minute, you're hasha tataya, kick a, kill, kill a mosquito, kickstart a Honda, EKOC, and then two seconds later, you're yelling and screaming and God knows what you're doing. We've been there. And then you deal with condemnation, like how can I do this and I'm like, cause you got cracks. You got cracks. You got to let God fill in those cracks with his blood, his grace, his mercy. But the issue is this. So we have a sin problem, right? We've got to, we got to get rid of the sin. We got to get rid of our sin problem. Because we know, right? We've been talking about no limits. Big limit here, folks. Woo, in case you're not wondering, this thing called sin, big problem. Sin separates us from God. So we have a limit. So we're talking about no limits the last couple of weeks, right? Last week we had a phenomenal uh, we talked about uh, phenomenally, uh, my wife was on, we talked about uh, um, a bunch of aspects to limitations in our life. It's been great so far, but I got to be frank with you, one of the greatest limitations you have is this word, that right there, sin. That's a big limitation, right? So I got to get rid of my sin problem. So what do I do to get rid of my sin problem? Then I got to just be holy. Got to walk around holy. Got to walk around. Got to just be one of those people. I don't ever do anything. So I know I know what it is, right? Here, 
I've, I've talked about this before. I'll share it again. Because the way we solve sin, most of the time in our life, right? I've shared this with you before. I'm, I'm, I've learned something over the last couple of years. I've learned to embrace the controversy. So I'm going to share something with you, probably a little controversial. But I think it's just sort of the thing that my lot in life. 1930s or so, I can't remember. My, my history is a little fuzzy, right? 1930s, this invention comes out. See if I can draw one here. This invention comes out called the radio, right? I don't know if it looks like a radio. It looks like a bad toaster. <laughs> I'll have to put it up there in case you're like, what in the world did he just draw? This is like a bad game of Pictionary. All you visual people are loving today. Everyone else is just distracted. So the radio comes out, right? Problem is, radio had like, you know, singing on it. It had other stuff on it. Radio, bad. In fact, oh, I got technology here. Look at this, folks. Radio, pfft. we got to get rid of radio. Oh, let's get rid of radio. Radio, Bad. Ooh, can't have radio. Can you see my red? Ooh, it's not very good. A little pinkish. So radio's bad. Because radio got, you know, it's got Glenn Miller. It's got, you know, Fats Domino. This, this, this stuff will send you straight to hell. Can't listen to it. It's got Dragnet. It's got all these stuff on there, you know. All, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Go Google it. It's so you got to get rid of radio because radio can't. If you have a radio in your house, it's probably going to be the thing that's going to cause you to go straight to hell. So let's get rid of radio. Well, the problem was, what happened? 1950s, 1960s, guess what happened? That little box entered into our homes. And I'll put a little picture here to kind of help you. My terrible stick figure. This guy entered into your home. Right? Boom! TV enters your home. Right? Now, compared to the radio, to t compared to the TV, the radio, the radio, look, okay, let's go back and talk about this, because you know what, this is, let's, let's fix this here. One second, time out, hold on, we've, we've prayed, we've studied scripture, now we got a revelation. Um, we're going to take the X off of radio, um, so we're going to allow you, because radio is actually not that bad, uh, because television's worse, so um, we've, we've, we've re we're, we're, we're re-changing. Radio? Good. Check mark. Let's put a little check mark Mr. Right next to radio, because this stuff, this is the new one. Woo! We got to, I mean, X that thing out. Some people call it the devil box. Get that thing out. Get that thing out of here. And that's how we live, right? Because here's why, and I'm not I'm using this as an illustration. I'm not getting into all the pop culture ramifications of things. I'm getting into this because, because we don't understand this word. Remember the word we started off with? Brother Charlie, you could be doing this so much better than me. Because we don't understand that word, shoe, to return. Because we don't understand that. Our idea of keeping sin in our life is to abstain. So we build a life of abstaining. And we abstain. And so instead of, instead of trying to, to return to the ways of righteousness in our life, to, to get on the path of righteousness, our idea is avoid things. So then guess what? That's how we get out of balance in our life because we start to pick and choose things that are our downfall. So for some, it might be uh, over here. This is mine. So I was like, this is bad. We can't do this. But for, for me, that's actually not, I'm not even really tempted at that. It's not a big deal to me. But over here, this is a big downfall. So what do I do? I make a, 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 a holy case about this. And so we're all running in different directions, and everybody's saying, this is bad, this is good, and nobody's making sense because our idea to fix our sin problem is abstaining 
from doing anything wrong. Well, then we know the end of this story. Because the problem was because we did not learn to walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And we didn't learn how to correctly apply the principles of scripture. Here's what took place. And I have tons of evidence to this and I'm not going to use it today, but I could. Here's the problem. Hold on one second. I'll be right there. Here's what happens. Next thing you know, this thing got invented. And it's neither radio, it's neither television, it's its own animal. But the problem with it is, this thing has got so much area on it you can't define. Can't say it's all bad. Can you find bad stuff on here? 100%. But some of you, a lot of us, we use this every day to communicate with people. We use it to talk to our loved ones, our husbands, our wives, our kids. This is our lifeline. We use it for work. I mean, now with your phone, you don't ever have to leave your couch. You can order food, airline tickets, entertainment. You can do everything from your phone, literally. There's nothing you can, I mean, literally, we had a, we, we had a doctor, a virtual doctor's visit. I can go to the doctors now without even getting off my couch. And you're even coming, you're, you're watching church today from your device. So now we can't, now we got a problem because we haven't learned to walk in the way of righteousness. And all we've learned to do is get in that cycle, right? Of cliff, bad, cliff, bad, cliff, bad. And now we come into the world of the internet and we don't know where to go because there's cliffs and potholes all around us. They're interspersed, they're interwoven. You can't just make determining, you can't say, this is good, this is bad. It's all intertwined, and next thing you know, guess what? It starts to tear at our fabric. Because we don't understand the principle of what it means to truly turn. This is why Jesus gives us this powerful scripture powerful we used it on uh you used it the other day and digging deeper and i'm going to use it again today john chapter 14 and hopefully now after watching digging deeper and this morning this is going to have a more powerful meaning in your life john chapter 14 verse number six jesus said to them i am the way the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth, and life. Why did Jesus call himself the way? Because he was referring back to the principle that we see all the way back in Genesis and reflected in Psalms 23. And Brother Trombley gives us some more examples in Digging Deeper. But we find the fact that Jesus is saying, when you turn, you're going to turn to me. My ways, my path. My understanding, you're going to put on my identity. We're buried with Christ in baptism. We start to think like him. He teaches us how to think. He teaches us how to walk. He teaches us how to live our life. He teaches us how to live and navigate this crazy world. It's his spirit that leads us in the path of righteousness, right? What did, well, I'm getting excited. I got to calm down. Got to find my center. Oh, because I get excited here. What did Jesus say that the Holy Ghost was going to come and do? Don't all yell it out at once, right? I love this word. I love it. He said the Holy Ghost was going to come and be your guide. What do you need a guide for? Why would you hire a guide? Let's say you and I were going to go on a jungle excursion today and we hired a guide. Why would we hire a guide? Well, we would hire a guide because they would know the path. They would know the way. They could help us navigate because we've never been here before. We don't know where the dangers are. We don't know the pitfalls. We don't know where the hidden cliffs are or the, the, the crevices or the other dangers of the path. But the guide knows. 
So when I hire the guy, my job is to follow the guy. I don't need a compass. I don't need a map. I don't need a, I don't need opinion. I just need to know if, if I trust the guide and the guide knows what he's doing, then I just have to follow the guide. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us into all truth. And that truth is not just simply theological truth. Every time we hear truth, most of us think we're talking about theological truth. <clears throat> so he'll lead us and guide us in all truth. Therefore, I'll know truth. We know what truth is. Jesus' name. Acts 2.38. That's truth. That's an aspect of theological truth, but that's not all truth. Because I got to be honest with you, some of you Acts 2.38ers, you know theological truth, but you don't know life truth. And that's why you can dance on Sunday and be sinning on Monday. We're getting that in just a second. Well, I'm either making enemies or helping somebody or all in both hands. So we got this thing called, we're going to lead us into God, it's all truth. Now watch this. Brother Chomley went through this, and I just want to share it with you because we're going to get into one more thing here before we're finished today. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, very familiar to us, three components. Repent, be baptized, and receive the Spirit of God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Watch the elements. That's why that's so important. It's not just a random thing. We've got the first one, which is repent. He says repent, right? Repent. That's that word. To return. We know repent. We do that so we can return. And then we do that thing we call baptized. We're baptized. Why? Because we go through this again on digging deeper. Baptism brings us back into a state of purity. It brings us back into a place where we're in connection with him. Covenant, we know this. Which then finally leads to that receiving of the guide. Now watch what happens. This is turning away. This is restoring and this is getting on the path. Notice that those three components we talk about Acts 2.38 are not just simply the message of salvation that's going to get you to heaven. Those components are something that should be a part of our life every day. I'm constantly returning. I'm constantly having the blood of Jesus wash me. And I'm constantly accepting the guide's help in my life because I don't want to get in that cycle of life. And we talked about this. The reason I'm bringing all that is the foundation because we talked about this in Tuesday Talk. And for the next uh, few minutes here, I've got about uh, 15 minutes. I want to show you something here because this is how it plays out. Right? Our traditional way of thinking, and I did this on Tuesday Talks, but I have better technology today. Tuesday Talks, I just had a piece of paper, but today I've got technology. So here's how this is important. Why it's important. Because this is how we usually define our lives. We've got three aspects of our life. <clears throat> We've got my world, which is going to be the W down here. <clears throat> <clears throat> we've got the big C, which is church, right? And we've got the big G up here, which is God. And this is how usually my life is lined up. And I have spent, unfortunately, I've learned the hard way, my life was, a, was, was focused like this. So if I'm down here, and I'm living my life in my world, my path to God goes through the church. To get to God. And so because of this, this space right here is holy. Because this is where God and the church connect. And therefore, it's the holy place. For lack of a better term today, I'm going to define this part right here as this is my Sunday. Woo! I don't know if anybody else is seeing the revelation, but somebody I can feel it. The Holy Ghost. 
This is Sunday. Because this is where church and God come together. This is holy. This is my day where I come and I focus on God and I focus on him and he is my God. The problem with that is this. Sunday will be over. And your commitment on Sunday will be over right now. It's 10.50 and another uh, 15 minutes or so, I'll be done. And then so those of you that are going to life group, you'll go to life group an hour, an hour and 20 minutes after that, you'll be done. So about 1.30 or so, you're done. Sunday, done. This part of my life, over. Woohoo! Did that, done that, great. Got that out of the way. Now let's get back into this part because this is my, this is important to me. This is my job, it's my family, it's my life, it's my pleasure, it's my all the stuff, everything that this is where I want to be. I know I need this, so I use this as the go-between. And so I know this, this is the place here where, where this aspect has got a lot of things in my life. We'll call those big, evil Arwara. This is what gives us the rules to get us there. So if I want to be here and I need to get to God, I feel like a bad football coach trying to design a play today. And I want to get to God because you know what? Here's where problems happen. Down in my life, it's where problems happen. I got needs. I've got situations. I've got things overwhelming me. I've got hurts. I got pain. I got dip. This is where I live. This is my, where I hurt, my pain, my past, my struggle, all of this. But because of that, in order for me to get to God, who is the ultimate one, who I know is the ultimate word. He is my helper. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. So I'm down here and I have all this stuff in my life. I got pain, problem, pressure, difficulty, question. I've got all this stuff that's taking place. Sickness in my body, uh, uh, worry, doubt, all this stuff down here. And God is the helper. But between God and I, I got to go through this thing called church. And church, I know, has got rules. And I got to abide by the rules to get to God. But the problem is eventually, I don't want to do the rules. So I don't get to God. And the problem with the rules are, when I'm down here, the rules don't affect my life because that puts me at a distance between God. So that's why when I'm in this space, I'll do right. I'll act right. I'll put on the right things. I'll talk right. I'll have the right. I can, I can worship and dance and have all the lingo. God is good. Praise the Lord. How are you doing? God is good. Woo, thank you, Jesus. There. But when I get in this life down there, nothing in this life equates to what I live here. I don't bring God into here. I can bring God here, and I can bring this element there, but I don't bring God here. And so therefore, I don't ever really feel the true aspect of joy and peace in my life, and I live in that world, right? Because I'm returning. When I say return, here's where you do that. This is the stuff. This is where all the that word sin happens. This is the place where all the cliffs are in my life, right? Down there, those are the sins. Those little black marks are the sins. That's what happens. So I've got to turn away. And when I return, what am I returning to? Well, a lot of people say, well, I return to church. Congratulations, but that doesn't help you. I return to the rules. Eh. Survey says, eh. Right, we know that to return, to fully get past, to get sin out of our life and to become over, to become a conquerors, more than conquerors, right? We are called more to be conquerors, then we've got to get a lot more of the big G into our W. And if we don't get big G in our W, we're never going to fully re feel the aspect. So we're going to have great Sundays, but we're going to have terrible Monday through Saturdays. Terrible. And so Sunday's coming. Woo! I can shout, feel goosebumps, see seven angels, hang out with Gabriel and Michael and all the other angels and feel Jesus. But when I get to my real world on Monday, I got situations, sin, difficulty, and I get into the habit of this. And so what do I do? Here's what happens, right? I'm heading towards a cliff. I return back to church, which then I get in my little aspect of all my duties, which makes me feel God. 
that gives me enough hope that when I come back into this world, I can make it another week. And here we go. I get in. This is a terrible cycle. No wonder we don't want to share the love of Christ with anybody. Because honestly, why would I want to bring them into this flawed system? This is horrible. There's no joy and peace in life in that. That's miserable. And then I, told, I said this too as they talked. Here's the real problem with this flawed system. Here's what happened. COVID came along and COVID absolutely smashed this thing to smithereens to a lot, in a lot of ways. Because COVID completely changed what we define as our holy Sunday. And guess what? We left people stranded down here because this connection was broke and they had no connection to God and this connection was broke. So we left people stranded in their world with God up here because the church as we know it was broken because COVID got us. So that's why we use people out there picketing the government. Open up church. Well, church never closed. We need church. Church is essential. Well, church never went away. Your version of church went away because now you don't have a path to God. Because your church, woo, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Woo. Your path to God was broken, so therefore you had to blame somebody instead of looking at the fact you are not living according to what God had put into existence. So it's the government. Government took church away. Government didn't touch church. Government doesn't have a power to do anything with church. God is the head of this church. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It wasn't the Democrats, the Republicans. It wasn't your mayor, your governor that stopped church. God shut down your version of church because he wanted to show you it was a broken system. And until you recognize it's a broken system, you can't fix what you don't realize is broken. After today, you may not want me to bring the whiteboard back. Because ultimately, truthfully, and I shared this with you on Tuesday Talks, but now we're looking at it within the context of repentance, returning, and walking in the path of righteousness. Ultimately, this is the correct way we are to live. God wants us to live. Our world, church, big G. And in the middle here, all three converge. This, this is how God wants us to live. He wants us to live. This is a discipleship life. Living in this, I'll call it living or hitting the mark. What's the mark? Living in that. Because you see, really where we're supposed to live, all elements of my being are converging in one. Where God and my life and my connection to the body of Christ are not one separate thing. They're all in the same. So when this breaks down, it doesn't really break down. It just shifts because my connection's already with God. And so therefore, it all moves. And so therefore, when I find sin in my life, and this is my sin problem, is in my W, then I go to C because C is teaching me about the path of G and I'm living in the middle and all of them work together so I can truly become a life of walking in paths of righteousness because I'm getting God into my world. I'm getting God in my world. You see, if you live over here, I talked about this a little Tuesday talks. If you live over here in this side of the bubble where it's in this, this, little, this little space here of God and church, you have no connection to the world. You hide. Remember what the, what the disciples were doing when Jesus was resurrected. They were sitting in a building with the doors closed, afraid, because they, they had God and the church down, but they lost connection to the world. They had no ability. And Jesus said, what? You guys got to get out of here. 
We know in Acts chapter 8, verse number 9, I mean, Acts chapter 8 and chapter 9, he brought persecution because the church had gotten comfortable with the God and church connection. They were okay that they had lost the fact that in Acts chapter 1, he said, I'm going to spread this gospel to the whole world. They had lost connection to the world. They were living here. It was okay for them. If you live up here, in this dot between the world and church, we call that religion. We call that just putting in your duty, putting in your time. God's not really involved in it, but you got enough of the do's and the don'ts in your life that you feel okay and you got your obligation out of the way. So really you want to live there, but you, you're willing to give up a little bit so that you can get enough in there to fulfill your obligation. It's dry, dead, dull religion. This is really becomes, this becomes sp sp uh, the spirit of religious tradition. This is the, this is religion. Sometimes I think religious tradition and spirit of tradition, sometimes they're not, they're not always the same because you can have religion, but this, this spirit of tradition can get into every aspect. And then the other problem is there's some that live over here because of the problem, whether it's church hurt or other issues they have had because the church has got falls and it's filled with a bunch of flawed people. Because of that, they just X that part out. They live over here in this dot. And the problem with that dot is then God is mystical. God is undefinable. And God is just sort of washy, wavy. Ooh, God loves everybody and it doesn't matter anymore. And you can do whatever you want because God loves you and he just loves you and God loves you and let's just all love each other and God is wonderful and God is in everything and there's some truth to that, but it's perverted because you don't have the aspect of the body of Christ. You just have this sort of mystical because ultimately you have, you're not living in the mark. And so guess what? What is the New Testament definition of, for sin. We look at sin. If I said the word sin, I would say for you, you would say mostly, okay, sin is to do something bad. That's the action. But what is sin? Sin is defined according to the New Testament as this. To miss the Mark, sin is defined as missing the mark. The question I have, what mark? Well, the mark of coming to church, reading my Bible, paying my tithes. Those are the applications. That's not the mark. This is the mark. Mark is when all three of the things in my life, if I'm not applying and God is not in my life, in my church, and if they're all not converging and I'm living in somewhere around here, it's close, I can justify it, but it's not the mark. Paul said, I press towards the mark. I don't think Paul was using my little diagram here, but Paul says, I press towards the mark of the high calling. Paul said, I'm aiming at something specific. I'm not just trying to shoot in the dark. So when I say to you today, you've got a sin problem, you need to turn. You need to turn to what? I need to turn to the mark. And the mark is living as God intended it. I'm not living a church life, a God life, and then my life. I'm living where everything is all wrapped in one. So when Monday wakes up, God is still there. His path is guiding me on my way to work as much as it is guiding me when I'm standing at the altar on a Sunday telling God how much I love him. When I wake up on Monday, his path still guiding me. On Tuesday afternoon, on my way to work and I've had a horrible day, his path is still guiding me. I'm still on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Why? Because ultimately I'm turning away from, I'm turning away from and turning to. And guess what? Flesh is flesh. I'm going to miss the mark some days. There's some days I'm going to get sideways. And I've got to every day have a course adjustment. It's a course adjustment in my life. And every day I, w I walk in that. Because ultimately, here's the fallacy of it. I've said this before. I'll use it again as I close. I'm bringing a bunch of different concepts together, hopefully today in one and helping someone. We're here. 
This is you and I today. And this is where we want to get to in God. And so because we're here and God's there, we just assume that it should be and it will be a straight ascent. And because of that, we assume our life should look like this. We should walk the straight and narrow and deviate none because this is the way it is. But to be frank with you, that's not the case at all. If you look at my life and your life as well, most of the time our life looks like this. If you plotted out our life, it would probably look more like this than it does anything. It's everywhere. Because every one of these sections represents a day. Some days I walk, some days I'm sideways, other days. But here's the powerful thing. It doesn't even look like this. Because here's the cool part. And I'm trying to give somebody hope today before I'm finished. Here's the awesome part. Because some of you feel like, Maybe you've gone too far and there's no hope. Here's the problem, right? You're here. You started this way. You were doing okay. And then you took a sideways mark and another mark. And now you find yourself over here. Can I be frank with you today? You don't have to return back to here. That's the problem, right? So I've got to, I've got to, okay, pastor, you're telling me, I've got this problem. All right, I acknowledge that, so I'll turn. So I'm going to turn, and I've got to get back to that point where I messed up. As that song says, I'm going to clean up what I messed up, starting my life over again. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. you got to listen to some old school gospel jams. I'm going to clean up woo, what I messed up. Mm, starting my life over again. That's a good old gospel jam. You can find it. So I got to go back and clean up what I messed up so I can get my life back on track. And so therefore, I feel like I spend half of my life backtracking because that's me, right? I'm, I mess up. I return back to the starting line only to mess up again to return back to the starting line to mess up again to return back to the starting line. And I feel like I never can make progress. I is pointless for me. But let me show you how God operates. I'm here. I ended up over here. Father, forgive me. I got off track today. Lord, I got some things in my life. I made some decisions. I, 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 I had some things happen in my life today that got me off track. Forgive me, Lord. I want to return back to your paths. And God says, okay. This little racer becomes the blood of Jesus. Welcome to a brand new day. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood today. And guess what happened? I start off the day back on track. And then guess what happens? I'm over here, over here. Life hits me. Now I find myself over here. Guess what? I don't have to get back to my point over there. Guess what, Father? I pray today, Father, that you would cover me with your blood. Wash me. Lord, I confess my sins to you today. I confess my faults and my failures. I confess the things I've done. I confess the sins that I've committed and I've confessed the things I didn't do that I should have done according to your word. I give it all to you. I ask to you for forgiveness. Restore to me, Father. I bring myself back into connection with your path in my life. And he says, my grace is sufficient. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. To cleanse you of all unrighteousness. To put you on the path of righteousness. It's a brand new day. And you know what? This might be my life for a long time. Messing up. God cleaning it up. Not giving you the right to sin. Not giving you the right to do what you want to do. But you keep going, honey. And it may not always be right. It may not, you may not get it all right. People may think you're never going to be the right there, but you keep walking with Jesus. Keep falling on his grace, letting the grace of God cover you, letting the blood of Jesus wash over you. And I'm telling you, you know what? As long as you fall, keep falling forward. Because if I fall, I shall arise. The righteous man falls seven times. But when I fall, I'm going to fall forward. So you let me keep falling but every time I fall, I'm going to fall a little bit further and I'm going to let the grace of God wash over me 
the blood of Jesus wash over me, and eventually it may not be pretty, but I'm going to get to my goal because his grace is sufficient. Woo! I wish somebody was just giving God praise right there in your living room. Thank you, Jesus. That's what living for God is. This is this idea. That's why we talk about repentance and returning being a thing of joy and excitement. Why? Because it helps me get back in connection with my heavenly father on the path of righteousness. It's not something I have to do. It's something I want to do. It's not something I shun. It's something I embrace. I want God to show me the stuff in my life because it means I'm going to be able to get closer to him. I'm going to be able to return some things in my life to turn away from, to turn to him. This is what really, and when I do this, I can live with no limits because sin doesn't become a limit in my life. I'm not saying I get to the point where I avoid sin. As long as you have this stuff right here, you're always going to deal with sin. As long as you have this junk here, you're always going to live with sin. Always. I'm not giving you an excuse to do what you want today. I'm not giving you an excuse to go out and do your thing and have fun and woo. You know, Pastor Ray said, I can just do what I want and I'll just ask God and he'll get rid of it and it's all good. I'll just keep doing it. No, because you're not walking in paths of righteousness. You're doing your own thing. And the Bible said, all things work together good for what? To them that are called according to his purpose. So you're not even doing his purpose. You're doing your purpose and he has no guarantee to cover your behind. But if I'm walking in him and I'm committed and staying with him, and I'm turning away, turning to his paths, then I know I'll... There's an old song we used to sing years ago when I was a kid. I'll make it home someday. I know I'll make it. I'll make it home someday. I know I'll make it. I'm going to make it. Not because I'm doing it right. But I'm making it because his grace is sufficient. His blood is the most powerful cleansing agent ever. Ty doesn't have anything on the blood of Jesus. Gain, shout. You can't do it. You can shout for Jesus, but you can't shout from Walmart and get your, get your sins forgiven. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I know you have spoken. To, I could feel your anointing. I could feel the power of your revelation today. I know today has been unconventional. It's been different. You gave this to me today, and I submit it all to you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the power of revelation to be upon the hearts and lives of those that are watching, those that will watch, that they would not only just see, but they would understand and be able to apply the word of their heart, that they could be set free from the shackles of tradition. They could be set free from the shackles of religious tradition. They could embrace your path. Your path doesn't always seem right. Your path doesn't always look right. Your path's not always popular, but your path is a path of righteousness, peace, and joy. So I pray today through the power of your spirit that your spirit would lead us and guide us into all truth. We submit ourselves to you today. And Father, for those of us that have been watching today that you have pointed out or that have been, have been made attention to some sin in our life that we need to correct, by your grace today, we ask that you would forgive us but as we turn away from, we ultimately want to turn to your paths. We don't just want to replace sin for sin. We don't want to just abstain from doing wrong. But we want to remove the old and replace it with the restored with you. We don't want to kick out the strong man and leave an emptiness in our hearts. But God, we want to remove so that you can fill. I speak all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak a spirit of revelation. I bind every spirit of doubt. I bind every spirit that would war, that would steal this word from our heart. You, your word said, Lord, you we should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I speak freedom in our hearts and minds today by the power of the truth of your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I hope somewhere today that something that was done or said today would challenge and change you to become more like Christ. In Jesus' name.